Hey, what is up guys? My name is Cosmin and you might know me from the comment section from the videos put out by the Simple Designers. Now, I recently started doing videos and since this is such an awesome community, <laughs> the Simple Designers asked me if I wanted to do a guest video here and here I am. In today's video, I'll be taking one of my favorite illustrations from this channel and do a small redesign. You can see the result here. If you'd like to see how I've done it, please stick around for a couple of minutes and let's get started. Let's jump into Illustrator and I've already created a new document, nothing special. It is 9020 by 1080 pixels. We'll want to make sure that we have Smart Guides enabled, go to View, you should find it there and also disable Snap to Pixel. I also want to have the Pathfinder window on my workspace. And being a redesigner, I'd like for my burger to be a little bit bigger. So let's create the bun. Just add the rectangle and using the direct selection tool around each corner. And now I'm ready to add the cell. So I'll do it the same way the simple designers did it. Create a line and once I draw it, go to effect and let's find Disort and transform. And here select zigzag. Make sure to have preview on so you can see the changes in real time and add more edges. 11 should be fine and hit OK. Let's go to object and expand appearance. For this shape to be complete, I'll need to add the top part. So let's place a new rectangle right on top of it. To increase its width, make sure to hold down the Alt keys and drag to the sides. And let's round the corners. Now I could simply merge these two shapes, but that would be way too easy, so why not add the new anchor and remove it and connect the sides. Let's adjust the size a bit. And as you can see, it, it's going to snap to the sides of the bun. And once I'm happy with the result, let's move it up. As you can probably tell, I've assigned a different shade of gray to each element just to get a look of how the burger is structured and the first thing I noticed is that the middle elements are kinda small. So let's make a group and with the direct selection tool I'll adjust the anchors on the side. Since I did that, it kinda messed up the path here, <laughs> so I'll need to manually adjust the handles. Let's zoom out and it's shaping to look like a burger. I'll add some random colors to it. Let's have a pinkish red and I'll want to save it as a global color inside my swatches panel so I can change it later. Let's expand the gradient window since I want to have more control and drag these two colors on each end of the gradient. The only thing is that I want the light source to come from over here and since I want to simulate that and shadow by playing around with the placement of these two colors. Let's go to the gradient panel and reverse its positioning. And now I can start playing with each individual element. Uh, let's select the first one, the straw, and hit G to be able to control the placement of each gradient line. You just have to click and drag and that will make each element have a completely different look while still basically using the same colors. If you want for it to be perfectly horizontal, just hold down shift while dragging it. For some more complex elements, I'll use a radial gradient. Let's reverse it. And after you hit G, you'll be able to see all of these options which allow you to control its radius, shape and even rotation. 
Once you're happy with something, just click and drag the gradient bar to place it in a new position. Now, again, my whole goal is to create a very simple looking illustration that mimics real dimension and has a dramatic shadow that makes some parts of these elements to fade into the background. Let's select all of the shapes that make the burger by holding down shift and clicking each one. Copy and paste in front and using the pathfinder window I'll hit merge. All of this is because I like to create a rim effect for both elements, so for that I'll add the stroke to this shape. And make sure to have an empty fill. Let's slightly increase the stroke size and select the main color. I'll do the same for the soda cup, but first let me do some small adjustment to the stroke. Uh, not a lot of changes, but I'm going to leave it the way it is. Still want to try some things, but let's create a shape from the cup as well. Select the, the elements that make the cup, copy and paste in front, apply a random solid color and hit merge. I'll just sample the same style as I did for the burger outline. And now I want to do the same for the straw. Now I can select all of these strokes and go to Object, Expand, let's hit OK, and now I'll try to add a gradient on them. Let's start with the straw. Now, I'd prefer for the dark gradient to fade out, so I'll adjust the opacity of the darker color in the gradient panel, set it to 0% and apply it to the reds by sampling it with the eyedropper tool. Once I have a gradient, just click and drag till you find something that looks OK. The final touch will be to do some small adjustments to these two colors, so let's double click them. And since they are global colors, they'll apply the changes automatically everywhere they were used. And I'm looking to have a slightly easier transition from the red to the background. And these two shades seem to work nicely together. Here is the final look of this illustration and a side-by-side -side comparison. With this video, I just wanted to show you how a simple concept can be rendered through so many different styles I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you'd like to see how I've used this illustration to create a landing page, you can check out my channel, the link is in the description. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button for this video and subscribe to The Simple Designers. I love everything that comes out of this channel and I'm so grateful to be part of it now. Till next time, take care guys, bye.